One. Okay, here we go. All right. So today we are discussing shaping the offer. How many people throw it in the chat? You've talked to somebody and their offer was unclear. Or you have a business, but it's even confusing when you start talking about the offer. When someone asks you, how much is it? You give a whole a whole dissertation or a whole explanation about how much it is. When you walk into a gas station, you go to the little glass, you open it up, grab a juice out of it. You hold it up for the, for my friends that live in the city. You hold it up and say, hey, Bobby, how much? And he says, $2. You walk to the counter, you give him the $2, and you leave. What if you walk to the glass door, you open it up, grab your drink, hold it up. Hey, Papi, how much? Well, okay, so that is, that's a Calypso drink, and it's it's red, so you don't, you don't want the blue one, right? Okay, cool. So you want the red, you want the red. Okay, so the red, okay, bring it up here, actually. Bring it up here, and let me see, let me scan it. Let me scan it first, and let me see how much in it. You'd be like, bruh, what's, I just want to know how much the drink is so that I can buy it. And that is, come on, hey, first off, Michael QLAU, if you live in a city, they're all, Bobby, come on, man, that's how you, I'm from Jersey, so this is this is how we have these conversations. <laughs> My point is, I talk to a lot of you all, and when you start explaining the offer, it's not clear at all, and I'm confused. And it seems like when you talk about it, you're confused. I had an issue yesterday where someone uh, reached out to my team and they wanted a podcast consultation. They want to know if I will sit down with them and discuss their podcast. My answer is yes. It's $2,000 and we'll sit down for an hour. And at the end of this, you have a clear direction on your podcast. You have a monetization strategy. Uh, your branding. I, I can I can do this in an hour. If it takes longer than an hour, great. If it takes less than an hour, great. No problem. But the person had to go from person to person. As one person on my team, they send them to another person on my team. The other person sent them to another person on my team. And finally, that person asked me, hey, what do you want to do about this? I said, yo, our offer is confusing. We should have a system where a person can ask that question and they get an invoice. <clears throat> but it was confusing. So this is this is vitally important that you start shaping the offer. And today we're going to go through it. So I want you to really take notes, okay? I need you to take notes because this is going to be good. All right? Here we go. Here we go. Number one in shaping the offer. The first question is, who do you help? Who do you help? I need you to create an avatar. What is an avatar? An avatar is the profile of the ideal person that you would like to help. You need to know a little bit about the person that you want to help. What are the things that they struggle with? What is their need? <clears throat> The demographic of person that you are talking to, you need to know what they're struggling with, what do they need, a little bit about them, what type of stuff do they buy, how much money do they make, your particular avatar. So we have to start shaping the offer, but we have to know who we want to help. Not necessarily what we want to help them with just yet, but who is it that we want to help? We want to take that into consideration, okay? Next, number two, who is the customer? I know what you're thinking. David, you just asked that question. Who do you want to help? And then you're asking another question in a different way. Who is your customer? Well, not necessarily. So sometimes the person that you help is not the customer. The definition of customer is the person who pays you. Sometimes it's different. 
If you write a children's book, the person that you help is the child. But who's the customer? Is the child going to pay you for a book? Throw it in the chat. I write a kid's book. My goal is to help the kid. But is the kid my customer? we got to think about this. We have to think about this. So you might be creating some sort of program for a jail or a prison in your city. You're creating a program. The person I want to help is the inmate. But is the inmate my customer? No. No. Of course not. Uh, Shadow said, isn't it immoral to market to kids? <laughs> if you think so. Hey, you ever notice that they put the sweetest, colorfulest cereals on the bottom, on the bottom in the grocery store? Eye level of the child. <laughs> you have to listen. The objective is to market to the child. So the child says, hey, mommy, I need you to be this customer for this person. And I don't know where, I don't know where my daughter is getting this stuff from, but she watches TV and she, I'm telling you, twice a day. I want to buy that. She's two years old. Where you get that from? I want to buy that. Daddy, I want to buy that. You're, really, you're, at, you're two. You don't buy anything. You got no money. What you're saying is, well, somebody on this commercial is doing a phenomenal job of marketing to the child so that her parent will buy it. So we have to identify the difference. You may be a speaker where you are teaching, uh, uh, you're teaching soft skills, things of that nature, to a corporation. The person that you want to help is the employee, but who is the customer? It's the company. We got to be clear, guys. I want to help entrepreneurs. But for my podcast model, the customer isn't necessarily the listener. The customer is the person who wants to put ads on my show. Reason why we don't cuss on the show. One of the reasons. We don't cuss on the show because I don't cuss. But I will stop a... I will stop a guest in their track from cussing. Now, if they got to like deliver the way they deliver, we're going to beep out everything. Why am I doing that? Because I just want to have a clean show? Am I doing that because I think that you don't want to hear cussing in the show? Do you think I'm doing that for that reason? Why do you think I don't allow cussing on my show? Advertisers want to market on a show that's as clean as possible. Listen, on YouTube, they'll mark a particular video with profanity or not. I don't want my videos marked with profanity because the customer is not you. You are the person that I'm trying to help. The customer is the advertiser. And advertisers want a clean show. They don't want any barrier to actually market on there. And if it's too much, they feel like their customer is closely associated with the content of the show. And it's not just about getting in front of the audience. They want to be associated with a clean show because my audience is the, is the group of people that I want to help, but my customer is the people with the money, the people that pay me. Does this make sense? These are the things we never talk about. We never have a conversation around. We think that the person that we want to help and the customer are the same people, and they're not. They're not. So maybe, maybe I have a fitness program that's focused on mothers who just had a child. Let's say my whole campaign is focused on mothers who just had a child. Yes, I want to help the mother lose that baby weight from the child because I want the mother to feel great. Absolutely. That is who I want to help. But maybe I'm marketing to the child's father. Maybe I'm marketing to the husband. And maybe the campaign says the greatest gift you can give your 
wife is her body back. I, she gave you a child. The least you could do is give her her body back. Man, isn't that interesting? I mean, it's it's not. No, I don't think it's dangerous. I think it's reality. I think it's good marketing. If I saw it, if I saw it, I would think, yo, you're right. Because this is this is a problem. And y'all, listen, postpartum depression is a real thing. Am I right? It's real. Partly, partly because these women, their whole body changed. And it's hard to get off because they're hungry. And they don't really, like you got to take care of a child when you get time to like go exercise. You don't have the energy. My point is sometimes the customer is not the same person that you want to help. And that can be a strategy that I'm giving you to start marketing a product or service. Got it? Good, good, good. Okay. Uh, helpful so far? Helpful so far? You got to know who you're trying to help and you got to help who's, you got to find out who's paying you. Sometimes it's the same, but not all the time, okay? Number three, what is the pain point of the avatar and the customer if different? We're starting to shape our offers, okay? What is the pain point of the customer and the avatar? It may be different. We have to know the pain point of the person that we want to help, and we have to know the pain point of the person that's paying. A school, you might have an offer for schools where you go in and you teach the kids a particular skill set. We know the pain point of the child is they're not interested in school, so you got to teach them something that has some money attached or some cloud attached. You can be lit if you learn the skill, whatever. It's a pain point for a child. They don't want to be there. You need to make it entertaining, right? You also have a pain point for the customer who is the school that's going to pay you because they get funding based on attendance. So if you can go in and help the child want to be there and also help the school retain attendance, meaning they're coming to school on time, they stop, they stop leaving school, they stop ditching school, you can solve these problems, but you have to know the pain point. So the reason I'm saying this is because a lot of us come up with offers based on what we think is going to be good, but we need to spend some time understanding the pain point. I came up with this offer for helping podcasters with one-on-one -on -one situations. One, a pain point for me is I don't necessarily want to sit down for an hour, so I got to make it a price that makes me feel comfortable. But I know there's a lot of people that start podcasts that are super confused. And I have a course that helps with a lot of it. But some people learn like me and I need to ask questions. I need like back and forth dialogue. I know the pain points. I know it. So even when I'm, I'm, I'm telling, and it's not something I front face marketing, but if I had a website and I had to put it, I said, well, you need to learn the right equipment. You have no idea how to shape an offer for your podcast, the monetization. Also the direction of your show. Do you need a co-host or do you not? How do you shape every single episode? I know the pain points. I know what you're struggling with. Because I talk to a lot of people that I'm trying to help. So you need to spend time talking to both the people that you're trying to help and the person that's trying to pay you. And you really need to spend some time doing that research. What are the pain points? Not what they want to accomplish, but what, hurt, what hurts. You got it? You understand? Okay, this is important. We have to, I did, like this is, this is for shaping the offer. This is for shaping the offer because I don't, I don't want you to be confused about how to build a business. This is the core part of your business, the offer, the thing that you sell to people. Number four, what do you deliver? What do you deliver? My whole message today about shaping the offer is clarity clarity. I want you to be extremely clear on who it is that you help, what their pain points are, and what do you deliver? So I think, and I, again, I, especially if you're in the motivational, inspirational space, we get a lot of philosophical stuff that we're offering to people, 
But that's not what they want because it's not clear what you get. So we might say something like, uh, I want to help women live their best life. So it says, hey, what do you offer? Oh, well, I'll help you live your best life. We're going to change your mindset. The person that wants help, it, they may know that they need a change of mindset, but it's so confusing as to what they do or, or what they need or what that means. There's a lady that comes to my house and it's very clear and it's easy to understand what I'm paying for. She says, I will come to your house twice a week, clean every room, wash your clothes, fold them for this amount of money. I get it. She didn't come in, yo, I'm going to declutter everything in your life so you know where stuff is. I'm going to clear out all the stuff that you got going, all the obstacles and the barriers. No, I'm going to come to your house. I'm going to clean your house, every single room, wash the dishes, wash your clothes, fold them, put them in a drawer. This is how much. I'm telling you guys may think what I'm saying, this point could have been skipped. But I talk to a lot of people and I still after 10 minutes of you telling me what it is that you do, I have no idea what it is that you do. What is it that you deliver? What are you going to deliver? What are you going to do specifically, physically that I can quantify? I know there's going to be some outcomes and some results and yes, I may have less clutter. Yes, I may be able to uh, find stuff. But first, we want to know what you are going to do. Me and Donnie have a coaching program where we jump on a call every single Wednesday at 4 o'clock. We're doing this for two months. Everybody gets individual attention. Then they come to, the, uh, they come to an in-person live event where we spend a day together. 5,000 which we're about to raise that because this is a pilot program and it's working really well. Specifically, now, am I going to help you um, with your business? Yes. Can I help you make some money? For sure. But first, I got to define what am I going to deliver? I am going to coach every single week and we alternate weeks. Me and Dottie alternate weeks, alternate Wednesdays. But what's cool is, I coach this Wednesday, share the notes with Donnie. This is what I told each person. Then she comes on to make sure they did it. And then if they have any other questions, she goes in with the questions. Then she shares the notes with me for the following week so we can follow up and we're in sync. But for sure, I need you to come here every single Wednesday for two months, eight weeks. Then we'll meet. This is what I'm going to offer. This is what I'm going to deliver. Got it? I'm telling, this is like the foundational stuff of creating an offer and building a business. And the reason I'm having this conversation is because a lot of you are in error. I just want you to get clear. So she would say, hey, what do you do? Oh, we meet every single week for two months. Then we're going to have an in-person event this particular date. This is the price. Period. Okay. Don't over talk me. Don't over philosophicalize me, please. Somebody put that in the chat. Don't over philosophicalize. Throw it in the chat. Philosophical. Phil Just spell it however you spell it. You know what I mean? <laughs> don't oh, don't overcomplicate it. And this is for you and your own clarity. Ain't nobody gonna put it in there. And I'm, okay, thank you. Don't over philosophical. Thank you. I appreciate that, Nella. <laughs> Monique, y'all got it, Jessica. Y'all got it. Y'all got it. I like that. I like that, Bree. All right, cool. We need to know specifically what are the things that we're going to deliver. Next, number five. What is the outcome? Now, this is important. This is important. What is the outcome? What will they receive when you're done completing the service? Now, this is going to be uh, two parts. The obvious outcomes, and we can start adding the intrinsic value. 
We can start adding the intrinsic value in the sale. We can, we can philosophicalize now. Okay. We can start selling the dream of an ideal life saying stuff like financial freedom, which isn't financial freedom. Isn't a fact or it's not something that we can quantify. Are you ever really financially free? Yeah, but people like it. People like it, so this is going to be an outcome. Have you ever dreamed of being financially free? Have you ever dreamed of of uh, owning your time? Heck, does that mean? Now, at this point, once we know what we deliver, we can do two parts. We can philosophicalize it now, but also, what are the outcomes? What are the things that you can guarantee? What are the things that you can guarantee from this offer? So obvious, okay? Let's say you're coaching. By the end of this, you will have a clear, concise business plan. Obvious. If you're selling, if you're selling the fact that you are going to help someone with their business plan, you will have a clear and concise business plan. Intrinsically, yo, you'll have a lot of clarity on your business. You'll um You'll be able to articulate your offer to other people. You'll be able to take this information, put it in presentations so that you can go take it around the world. But we, we need to know exactly what people are going to receive and what can you guarantee. Do not over guarantee, but there should be something that you can guarantee in every offer. There should be something that you can guarantee in every offer. Okay. I have a course, a podcasting course. Can I guarantee success? Can I guarantee that you will be successful based on my course? I can't guarantee it. I can't even guarantee that you're after you buy it, you're going to take the course. I can't guarantee it. What I can guarantee, however, is you will receive all the tools that you need, everything in one course that you'll be able to start, grow, monetize your audience. Everything that you need here, I can guarantee it. It's all there. So if you go through it and say, hey, Dave, there's nothing about how I can monetize. Well, that's not true. Let's go to this particular module. Hey, Dave, I still don't know what type of equipment I need. Oh, no, no. Come to, this, come to this module right now because we have a whole bunch of different levels and money, how much it's going to cost for different levels. We give you everything you need to start. We give you everything that you need to start branding, growing your audience. We give you everything you need to start monetizing your podcast. I can guarantee that I'm delivering all of this in a package. I can't guarantee an outcome. But in your offer, in your offer, there needs to be some guarantees. Going back to the home cleaning service, I will guarantee every single dish in that sink will be clean. No problem. I'm buying that. Okay, put all the dirty clothes in the hamper. I'll go through every hamper, go grab it. I will wash and fold everything that's in these hampers. I can guarantee that. Wow, I feel safe with guarantees. I really feel safe with a guarantee. Don't you? Okay, so we need to know the outcomes. We can do the obvious outcomes for sure, extrinsic and intrinsic outcomes. Number six, which is my favorite. How much does it cost? Okay, John, we got you. We got you. Number one in shaping the offer, who do you help? Number two, who is your customer? That could be different. Watch the replay, okay? Number three, what is the pain point of the avatar or the customer if it's different? Number four, what do you deliver? Number five, what is the outcome? What does that customer receive? What can they can what what will they receive for sure? And then number six, how much does it cost? We gotta throw a number on it. We gotta throw a number on it. How much? How much are you charging me? Somebody throw a price in the chat real quick. How much, how much is what you offer? If you say it depends, I'm going to fight you. 
Now, sometimes the real answer is it depends. But we should have some sort of number, an idea. It starts at this. That's a number. Yes, yes, yes. We need to have something that's packaged and priced. My favorite example. This is a bottle of water. This bottle of water should have a price attached to it. Do you want water? Great. Here's the price for it. We package the offer, whatever our offer is. We have to package it. Sometimes we offer so much and it's confusing on the price because I don't know what you need from me, which could be an indication that you're offering too many offers. Or this is an indication that we need to take some offers, package it up for people and say, here, you could have this. It's a bunch of stuff inside of here and you get all the stuff that's inside here for this particular price. What is your price? What is your price? 15,000 to 30,000. Love it. 21,000, 5,000, 385 dollars a week, 2,500, 1997, 500. Ain't nobody got nothing for 20 bucks. You know, I got nothing for, for the dub. Seven grand, 35. Y'all ain't. Y'all good? I got nothing for the 30 piece. <laughs> Everybody was straight for the thousands. Look, it's easy to type. It's easy to type. But when we all start, when someone says, how much is it? Like, I mean, all right, so, well, okay. So, all right, so, well, what you'll, what I'll do, what I'll do for you is I'll do this, this, and this, and that. And then it's 20, um, 25, 2,500. But, but, but you could break it up. You could break it up. In a pay plan. So if you give me, like, give me a hundred dollars now, and then you could like, yo, whoa, 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 whoa. This water, two dollars. Set it down and wait. You don't have to over-explain your price if you're telling people what they're what you're going to deliver. You're telling them what their outcome is going to be. You don't have to over-explain the price. There should be a number. Let me tell you. The offer should be less than the value. The offer with the price should be less than the value. The only reason you'd be nervous to give someone the price is if the price and the offer are too close together or the price. Yes. The price and the value are too close together. David, what do you mean? If my service is worth a hundred dollars, I probably shouldn't charge a hundred dollars because now I have to sell you on the fact that the price and the offer being the same value is something that you can use. If the thing that I'm offering is worth $100, like my book, my book can help you make thousands. So I'm cool charging $30 because it can help you make thousands. The value of this book is not $30. The value of this book is 1000 The value of this book is 1500 but I'll give it to you for 30 No problem. We, there has to be some sort of value attached that's higher than the price, which makes it a no-brainer. So the value of me and Dottie getting on a call with everybody, and we have a small group, the value of me and Dottie getting on a call with everybody, it's worth 30000 We charge five grand, which when we offered it, people took it. Great, because the value is higher than the price. And I don't tremble in my voice when I'm sharing the price. If someone wants a consultation for podcasting, I'm not trembling at the 2000 because I understand it's going to save you a year of the journey. It'll save you a year. Let me, sh uh, I don't know if I could ex share my, uh, I don't know if I could share my screen. Okay. Um, going for you. What's the best email for you? What's your last name? Hold on. Where was it? Uh, so my guy, I got on the phone with him 
And he said, hey, Dave, I need a consultation on my podcast. I said, sure. He said, um, tell me about the tell me about the consultation. I said it's going to be an hour. By the end of it, you'll have a clear direction. You have a clear path for monetization, and you'll know how you're going to grow and brand this podcast. It's two thousand dollars. He said, okay. And then he texted me back after we got off the phone. He said, just chatted with my partner. We'll be down for the two K package once she comes back from her Europe trip which is October and gave me the date. Connect me with who you have to chat with to lock it in. I believe the more I started explaining the 2000, the more apprehensive people are going to be to buy. But because I know the value is more than what I'm charging, I feel no, because you're over explaining the price when you give it, you give the price and then you start explaining again. And then now people's like, oh, well, I'm a little more apprehensive because you're over explaining now. Now you're trying to sell me. You got it? So after, I remember being in the mall. I'm telling people about the T-shirts and the philosophy and all the stuff it means. And then I'd say the shirt is 25. I didn't have a problem sharing 25 because I built the value for the shirt so much. I mean, $25, I didn't feel nervous. But there are some people that work for me. As soon as, as soon as they say the price, they're like, yo, $25. I mean, if you get a cup, like you'll deal. Because you're not confident in sale. You haven't built the value of the product. Because in your mind, the value of a t-shirt is $25. I, yo, I, I, I posted it on my page. I went to, I went to the mall. And I told the story about my $100 t-shirt experience where I bought a t-shirt in the middle of the mall for like $100. It was like $90, $100, something like that. The girl told me, she said, hey, the shirt is normally $150, but I give it to you for like $100 or $90. And I was like, the, in my mind, I'm like the audacity. You're in the middle of the mall selling a shirt for $100. That's not, that shouldn't happen, okay? If you are in a boutique or something, okay, I get it, $100 shirt from a boutique, it makes sense. The aesthetic of the boutique fits the price point. I get it, but we're in the middle of the mall. But I bought it because she didn't make, she, in her mind, it didn't seem like a lot of money. And I think she knew the compliments that I get. She knew the quality that, I, that, that the shirt is. She's like, yeah, it's $100. And she started bagging it up. Well, it's, it's $150, but I get you about it. Boop. She didn't flinch not one bit, Nella. I'm like, wow. This girl knows that this shirt is worth more than $100. Incredible. So I bought the shirt. And I told it on the podcast. And guess what? Off of that clip, there was a bunch of people who said, yo, I'm going to go to the kiosk and buy it. Isn't that interesting? Now, yo, you know what the issue was? And the reason I hesitated, and we made this point that if it was a Louis shirt, I'd have paid $1,000 because the quality is amazing. The design is dope. I would have paid $1,000 and looked at it like, oh, this is fly. I've done it. I spent a lot of money on a t-shirt from a designer boutique. But in the middle of the mall, they're charging a tenth of it. I still hesitated. But the hesitation was from my own perspective of selling $25 t-shirts. But my reservation and the person that's selling it, her reservation Worth the same. She knew her value. I didn't know it yet. I know it now. And I'm going to go buy another shirt. Okay. We've got to identify the price, okay? And lastly, be clear with the number and proud of it. Okay? When you, when you say the price, be clear of the number and say it with your chest. Be proud of the fact that you're giving them a discount. Okay, so we're shaping an offer. Whatever you're offering somebody, you have to know who you're looking to help. You have to know the customer. What are they willing to pay for? Because that's the person who's going to pay for it. Number three, what is the pain point? What is the pain point? Why are people buying it? 
People are buying because they are in pain for something, right? So you're like, well, every sale isn't a pain point. Yes, it is. If you're walking through the food court and you got like a, a, a what's it called when you really want sugar? Like a craving. They're playing to that. Them Cinnabons solve a problem. You hear me? <laughs> Them Cinnabons in the mall? Oh, they are solving a real problem for me. Especially after I ate like something savory. Oh, pain point. Golly, they are solving a real problem. <laughs> You need to know the pain point of the customer. Got it? When the last time you had a Cinnabon? Come on, man. And they got it in big Cinnabons, little Cinnabons, little mini buns. They got different. It's awesome. Uh, they got a they got a joint where it's just the middle. <laughs> I think I'm going to go on to get me one. Uh, be clear on what you deliver. Very clear on what you deliver itemize things that you are going to deliver, okay? Number five, you gotta be clear on the outcome, both obvious and intrinsic. You start shaping that as well, okay? You need to know the outcomes. And then lastly, how much does it cost? Just throw a number on it, man. Uh, let's open this thing up for Q&A. Let's open it up for Q&A. I know y'all got questions. What we got? 